is journalism. Um, let's start with a topical story that does, in fact, involve a church. Here we go. Um, so it's been a really good week for the image, public image of journalism. These very handsome and attractive people are uh, the stars of Spotlight, um, the movie which has just picked up uh, the Best Picture Oscar. How many people have seen it? Oh, my goodness. That's, a, that's actually quite a high count here. How many people thought it was the best picture they saw last year? Nobody, apart from me. I did. Um, and uh, well done. That's good. You're my favourite already. Uh, <laughs> I'd just like to say nobody slept in a dead horse during this film, which made it infinitely better than The Revenant. Um, so, so the reason I'm starting with Spotlight is this. First of all, um, it's, a, it's a, a, a love letter to investigative journalism, and journalists can feel a vicarious glow of um, uh, goodness about their profession, even as they slot another... Kardashian into the Daily Mail's sidebar of shame. Uh, we can all celebrate the greatness of our, our field. Um, but the work of the uh, investigative team at, uh, in, in, the, in the Spotlight team at Boston Globe in 2002 uncovered uh, the child abuse that had been going on and laundered really through a, a network of priests in the local Catholic church. Um, it won a Pulitzer Prize in 2003. Uh, it's been held up as a, an example of how um, shoe leather reporting uh, of serious issues uh, is something that we should all aspire to and something that we should hold very dear. Uh, however, at the time that something that happened off camera that uh, you won't see in the film is the other story that was being told about journalism um, at the same time that uh, the Spotlight team were doing their thing. Um, so the Globe was bought in 1993, that's 10 years before the investigation by the New York Times company, for a billion dollars. Then, well, it's Pulitzer Prize in 2003. In 2013, two years ago, it was sold again by the New York Times company, whose business, business it is to uh, maintain and make profit from newspapers, to a businessman called John Henry for $70,000. So uh, in the sweep of 20 years, you have an august news brand which has lost more than 90% of its value. Uh, and yet, it's also scaled the peaks of journalistic excellence. Uh, and we'd always been told, if you do brilliant journalism, you will make money. Uh, and I'm here to tell you that's not true. Um, in fact, in many cases, the exact opposite is true. Um, it's also the case that two months after the Globe broke possibly their most significant story in terms of that they were able to produce uh, a, a victim of abuse, um, and they published that story in August 2002. Uh, in September 2002, Google News launched, which changed the way that people found and shared news on the internet. Um, and actually, right at the end of the film, if you, if you go and sit and you sort of sit all the way through it, um, right at the end of the film, there is a little sort of cameo, if you like, which explains, as the, as the papers thunder off the presses, it also explains that were it not for the internet, probably this story would have stayed as a local story. Uh, it wouldn't have reached the audience that it reached. It wouldn't have triggered questions in other communities about whether, in fact, these experiences were shared. It would not have become the same story that it did. It would not have had the impact that it had. So, in a way, this is the paradox of publishing, which is you are given through the web the most incredible tools to do and make and disseminate journalism. Uh, and at the same time, this is happening, I can just, uh, which is, this is what happened to advertising revenues in American newspapers between 2003 and 2011. Um, so this, again, is just as the uh, Globe was winning its Pulitzer. Uh, you can see their sort of inexorable decline. Uh, and that's in all areas. That's in the retail, what they call retail advertising. That's in national advertising. And that's in classified local advertising. Um, and so the Boston Globe was not alone in this either. Um, the Washington Post, so the paper which is now edited by Marty Barron, who is the Leave Schreiber 
very, who incidentally is exactly like the Lee Schreiber character in Spotlight. Marty Barron now, is now editor of the Washington Post. The Washington Post, as you know, broke, broke Watergate uh, in the early 70s. Um, in 2013, the same year that the Times was selling the Globe for $70 million, uh, the Graham family, which had owned uh, the Post right throughout its glory years, decided that it couldn't fund what it needed to do to the Post to get it into the next phase of its future. And it sold it for $250 million, slightly more than $70 million, but still not very much money, uh, to Jeff Bezos, who is the founder of of Amazon. So again, there's a kind of a, a sort of a parable there about the um, great families of American newspapers uh, giving up, um, not because they don't love print, uh, not because they don't love journalism, but just because the economics of the business were becoming too intractably difficult to cope with. Um, so two significant things have happened. So when I said I think more has happened in the past five years, than happened in the past 500, um, mostly this is the impact of social media. Uh, how many people here are, have a social media account of any description? So does anybody not? Is anybody completely off the grid? Oh, congratulations. i keep it that way if I was you. They do terrible things with your data. Um, so, so you're very representative. You, 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 I would say, are a representative. You know, 98% of the world now has some sort of presence or connection with. And, and what's more, it's actually quite difficult not to have a presence on social media. Um, if you want to hold down a job, uh, if you uh, are connected, uh, if you're at school, you know, my high school age son uh, was a holdout, so I don't want a Facebook profile, I don't believe in those things, they're all and he gets to high school, he finds that actually if you belong to clubs or organisations or you want to find that information about homework, the way that people do it is through, is through Facebook. Um, so News publishers, because we've had this huge uh, explosion in the use of social media, news publishers have actually lost control of distribution for the first time. So when I was saying this is a really, really big change, the biggest part of that change is that we no longer have any control over where our stories end up. You know, we don't package them up and put them on the streets uh, and have the trucks rolling out the factories anymore. Um, you can't even predict, you know, where you're clip for the six o'clock news is going to end up. You don't know who's going to watch it. You don't know how it's going to get there. Um, the chances are it's probably going to be intermediated by something like a Facebook feed. Um, new news companies who have popped up in the last five to ten years, and that includes Bu include BuzzFeed, that includes uh, Vox Media, um, Fusion is another new brand that's popped up, have actually built their entire journalistic operations around the idea that this will be, you, you'll have to distribute through social media to have a presence. 